Let's call it to order. It's 5.01 p.m. on May the 4th. Oh, wait. Oh, no, you are recording. Excellent. Okay, so it's 5.01 p.m. on May the 4th, 2021. This is the Finance Committee meeting. We'll call it to order. Um, the first item on the agenda was calling it to order. Next is reproving, review and approving previous minutes. Do we have a I'll move that? the minutes of I'll move the minutes of April 27th right. of the Finance Committee meeting. Okay. We have a second. Second. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, this fortunately didn't make it into the minutes, but I just want to apologize for, I was so sure and I was so wrong that I had not received an invitation to the, the school board meetings about the public hearings. And Casey forwarded me the email that she had already forwarded me way back when it happened. Um, so we did receive an invitation. Um, both of them are up on YouTube and I've watched them both. I will send the links if anybody else wants to watch them if you haven't already found them. Um, but they are there and we were invited and um, I blew it, so I apologize to the school committee and to Casey, because <laughs> it was there. And fortunately, Allison didn't write it in the minutes, so we don't have to correct the minutes for that. Sometimes when there's too much discussion, I don't Other, write it. <laughs> um, discussion of the minutes. I made the, a couple, there were some very small changes. Jeff and Julie pointed out um, a vote that I got wrong. Um, I can't remember which one, but I updated it according to them. They they were in agreement with each other. So we did the draft I sent, and then um, we're able to those changes. Anybody need more details Any on that? Any other discussion of the minutes? Um. Okay, in that case, let's do a roll call vote. John Paterk. Aye. John Pareski. Okay, I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Uh, Jeff Upton. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Skip Olmstead. What are we voting on? The minutes from last meeting. Oh, aye. <laughs> Tim Cambius. I abstain because I just came in myself. Got it. Okay, so oh, Allison Vanderbilt. Right. So that's a five zero two that passes. And just to catch Jim and skip up on my faux pas, um, we were indeed invited to the school committee meetings. I had it in my email. I blew it, didn't see it. So um, they are available on YouTube, and I'll forward the link to that if y'all want to watch them later. Um, we still need Brenda. And the, so we were supposed to tell If you promise not to tell her, she, she was trying to get all kinds of things done for the meeting. <laughs> she was going crazy, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got email from her, so I know she knows about it. Um, wow. We need to stall for a minute. Um, so next on the agenda is revenues. She just forwarded us an updated revenue um, projection. Oh, good. There's Casey. Um, Casey, oh, you don't look like you're at work. So you can't holler to see if Brenda is there. <laughs> no, but oh, she, her. she was there 20 minutes ago. So I'm oh, sure she's there. Oh, locking up. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Because we just got email from her with the new revenue projection. Um, all right, so everybody got the revenue projection that Brenda sent just a few minutes ago. And then um, I would say a couple of days ago, she sent an actual revenue history. Do you guys have that as well? Um, I don't believe I got that. Let me see. That was on. It was probably a week and a half ago, 10 days ago. Yeah. 
Here it is. It was on April 20th at 4.38 p.m. I can share this, maybe? All right, so this is what she sent. Um, this is the actual revenues FY 2020 and previous. Um, so it would end July of 21. So it has a, is that true? That's July true. 20, that ends in July of 2020. So it has a minor COVID impact. Just the first couple months of COVID um, would have hit the FY 2020 numbers. Um, Rick, do you want to say anything about this? What our takeaway should be? What's, what was, did you, were you talking to me? Yes. Uh, not, not at the moment, other than the fact that, you know, I would, I would strongly urge everyone to take a look at it. Uh, Did you freeze up? Kind of looks like you froze up. Well, heck. <laughs> I have computer problems right and left. But like you said, it, it only covers the last two months or the last three months of the or the, of the, or the first three months of the COVID problem. So, so. it does leave something to be desired. The so, Julie, you'll notice, you'll notice on the trash on fees, the there was a decrease, decrease in those because we started, started our sticker sales, sales later, later than we, we would, would have normally, normally because of COVID. COVID. Um, how about if we ask everybody, we ask everybody, everybody unless you're actually you're at, no, <laughs> except I'm actually talking, so she's not um, to try to get that, that echo. echo. Actually, actually, Jeff, can you Jeff, mute can you your iPad? I will uh, eliminate my computer. How's that? Say it again. Now we're still echoing. Let me leave the computer that better no no so you're not the culprit, so not the culprit. <laughs> one or the other, one or the other. I, think I was because i've done this for several weeks yeah oh that worked Whoever just did that, that fixed it. Um, that's the wrong email. Let's find the email with the revenues that we're supposed to look at today. Um, it's a capital report. Here's the new revenues. All right, so here's the revenues for today. Um, oh. I would really like Brenda to present this. Oh, here she comes, yes. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. All right. So um, we were just getting to revenues. Do you want to say anything to us about them? Uh, well, uh, I believe you all had a copy of this from before. So no, no change to my estimate for um, the tax levy, no change for the cherry sheets. Um, 
or the overlay. I've left that as as my as I projected, but I did go back through the 10 year history of local receipts. And I looked at where we were at through the end of April and revised the um, estimated local receipts based on that. So I have increased them some. I'm a little nervous about them. Um, but I think overall, the overall projection is probably doable. Can you talk for a minute about um, how the projection, these numbers compare to actuals and what you sort of mentally keep in reserve? <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> um, so uh, what I've been kind of doing is looking at the last five years and, and doing an average of that and then seeing what 85% of that is because you wanna be conservative. You're not gonna always collect all of your tax revenues. So your local receipts have to be a cushion for that. Plus you don't know what's gonna happen with local receipts. So I, I looked at those numbers. I kind of looked at where we were at for the last five years based on that. Then I went to the current year revenues and said, okay, where are we at today? How does fiscal 21 look? Um, as a, for instance, right now we've only collected 585,000 for motor vehicle excise. Now, Karen tells me that between now and the end of the year, we might have another commitment, but it's coming out slow and it might be 80,000, but we might not be collecting all of that. So I, I kind of, took those judgments into account based on what I was seeing in the current revenues. Plus, I am not allowed to project any higher revenue for any one of these categories than what we actually collect for fiscal 21, unless we have a really good reason to do so. So I was kind of figuring the numbers based on that. I've been playing with this for a whole week. So I've been changing them back and forth and back and forth and doing different things with them. But I feel that what we've got in here right now is a fairly solid doable number um, that could take some cushion. Okay. Does that all make sense? Skip, you're muted. All right, uh, Brenda, I wanted to ask you a question about your 2021 figures. Uh, since we're at this point, uh, what, 80, 85% through the year, uh, we still have a fair amount to go. So how, how sure of you are, how sure are you of those figures for FY21? How sure am I of the figures? Yeah, for example, motor vehicle excise, you're showing $570,000. Uh, I'm guessing that's that's what you've collected so far? No, no, no. That was that was what we had on the recap from last year. That's what we were budgeting for. Okay. Now, we've collected 585000 for motor vehicle excise through this point. We normally have a lot more collected. I visited with Karen. She said there would be one, if not two more commitments between now and the end of end of June, which could provide another 80,000. Could, but things are running slow this year, so I can't say for sure how much more we're going to collect. I'm budgeting 625,000, being a little bit optimistic that we're going to have at least that much collected by the end of June. So we can project that for fiscal 22. I guess that's what I was trying to say, but probably not doing a very good job of it. Um, for instance, then with rooms and meals tax, we've collected three quarters of the year. So I took, I took what we've collected so far, I divided it by three. I said, okay, we're going to get at a minimum, probably another 43,000. Maybe we'll collect 50,000 because things are starting to look up. If we do that, 
we will have collected about 195,000 for the for the year. So I am projecting almost exactly what we would be collecting or what I think we're going to collect in fiscal 21. Um, that's not to say I, I think that fiscal 22 will look a little bit better in that picture, but it's hard to say. That answering any of your questions, Skip? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Do we need these to be uh, high? Pardon? Do we need these to be so high, or can we pull them back a little bit? They're pulled way right back. No, we don't need them to be so high. Um, I am a little uncomfortable with them being this high, but. This is still quite a bit less than what we would normally take in. We're taking in 2.2 million uh, on an annual basis, um, at least up to this point. Yes, fiscal 21 is not going to look as nice as the previous fiscal years. Um, but I don't know, Trevor, are you thinking that we should we should ratchet it back on something? Um, well, if we're... Um... You know, we think we're only going to get 195 this year, and we're—I mean, we're, it looks like we're putting in exactly what we're thinking we're going to bring in this year. Uh, I know we're hoping for growth uh, next year as things open up, so maybe maybe it makes sense. Um, I th I think so. I think with that, you know, we had been collecting. I think last year we collected 200 and uh, maybe 240,000 um, for. Uh, rooms and meals tax in fiscal Two, 286 pardon 286 286 okay so we collected 286 thank you because i i had to shut my whole computer down and so i had all these documents up and then i had to close them all so um so we collected 286 last year we're looking to maybe collect 195 this year i think this is the worst of it i do think that fiscal 22 is going to be better so that's why i was thinking well if i could budget 195,000, which might be exactly what we collect, I, I'm pretty confident we'll exceed that for fiscal 22 and probably exceed it by quite a bit. Okay. Anybody else have a question on these revenues? Do we feel comfortable with what Brian has projected? I feel very comfortable with what she's got projected already. Good. I do too. Great. I'm in uh, agreement with that too. Yeah, it's certainly less than what we had projected for fiscal 20, but um, uh, obviously much more than what we've, what we've budgeted for fiscal 21. So. Okay. And if you're constrained to what we actually collect for FY21, then it sounds like you're in about the right place. Okay. All right. Um, we were going to revisit the Tritown Beach budget tonight. Um, yes, and I, I believe she was going to be on at six like she was last week. Oh, at six. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do something else and then come back to that. Uh, are there any other budgets, Brenda, that you want us to look at again? Can we go back to revenue for one second? Um, how does the $16,603,000 compare to what we expect to expend? Is that what we... We we put, we're, we're expecting to receive sixteen million six hundred three thousand six hundred thirty two dollars. No, um, it, right right it, now our budget summary shows one hundred eighteen thousand six hundred dollars less than that. <laughs> um, not, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, so so right now our our expense budget our our summary budget shows about one hundred and eighteen thousand six hundred dollars less than that so that's our our cushion right now but i understand we now have two unpaid bills from previous years and i don't have any idea what that second one is 
The first one I think was 6,200. So I plugged that in today, but I don't know what the other one is. Um, I also uh, realized that the Frontier Regional Capital Request was a separate warrant article. So I plugged that into the budget today too. So that is included in that figure right now that's still showing we have 118,000 left that we could spend on capital or um, any other adjustments that we need to make to the budget. Okay, thank you. I think I, I was speaking for myself. I think it'd be helpful to see that number on, I, on the I, revenue detail or. I would have given it to you today, but I didn't feel like I had all the right numbers for it yet. So I was, um, uh, I delayed on that. Sorry about that. Okay, no, sorry. Right. Thank it, you. It doesn't, it doesn't look any different from what I did the last time, except for those two items that I just added, which was the one of the unpaid bills from a previous year and um, the uh, $15,242 that Frontier Regional is requesting for their capital. I'm muted. I'm sitting here battling away. Um, were there any other budget line items other than Tri Town Beach that we need to revisit? We will eventually need to revote the uh, interest on maturing debt because um, those figures came in a little bit lower. I was holding off, hoping that we might have a better idea for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, but I have a feeling we won't by that by the time of town meeting, but Okay, um, so next on the agenda is the budget summary and the capital plan. Um, so for the budget summary, Brenda, you say we have about 118,000. We have about 118,000 right now that's that's free. Um, we also, we're going to go back and revisit the open space uh, budget. Casey was working on trying to put something together that would start this year. So that's possible that that budget might change as well. Sorry about that. So we voted um, 20,000 or something for a new open space plan. Is this something different from that? No, that would be the same thing. Casey, do you want to talk about that tonight or not? No, I can give you a, a brief update. So I reached out to the COGS and asked for some help with this. They are willing to get us started. We need, a, I've asked for some help with the committee because you do need an open space and rec committee to do this. Um, they do have some DLTA funding and I'm just waiting to find out how much that would be. If we can knock this back by 10,000. I think that would be what everybody would want. And if we maybe had to come up with five or two, I'm hoping it would be five, possibly 10, as we had talked about before. It depends on how much DLTA funding they can release for us. But I think we're probably safe to knock it back to 10 um, for FY22. EC, what's DLTA funding? DLTA is uh, low, it's district, for some reason, district still lives in that term, local technical assistance funding. It is grant funding that goes directly to the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and they send out requests for projects and they help you facilitate with a little bit of funding on the state's part. So do you want us to vote that tonight or do you want to wait and come back? I was just waiting for a confirmation from Kimberly. Okay. All right. That is fine. So the capital plan, I think we're ready to talk about this, right? Um, 
I asked for a copy of the capital plan and I just sorted it in order of priority that the um, CIPC voted. You guys can see this, right? And you can see my mouse. So if I just, um, in my mind, if I just work down this, the first one is the wastewater treatment plant, which is debt excluded. So that doesn't fall within our 118,000. The second one is the roadside mower, which is reimbursed by the utility. So that we don't have to pay for. The next two are stems are covered by the, the, the rental funds that come in from the other towns, um, right? So that doesn't fall into our 118,000. So now we're, um, this is the first one. So the first one that does fall into it is the uh, multi-purpose loader for public works, which is 105. Um, Next is the police department HVAC upgrade. There's something about they were gonna, gonna look for a grant, but it was a little unsure, right? Um, and I get a lot of feedback. Okay. Um, and then the next two are Deerfield Elementary, which is sort of well laid out plan that they do every year. Um, and the next one after that is the center needs assessment and feasibility study. And if you count those, we're well over our 118, but approaching 300,000. Um, would Trevor or Casey or anybody like to comment from the town's perspective on these items? And if we just have 118,000, then we fund the first one. I guess we skip the police department because it costs too much and do the Deerfield Elementary School restroom. But um, I feel like there's more discussion that could be had. <laughs> so I think Kevin had suggested the other way that we could do this was to do a lease contract. I think that was a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. which we could possibly put into his budget. And that might be a, a good way to approach it from a strict outlay perspective, but we may have the opportunity now, keep in mind, I do not have a complete distillation from treasury on how they're going to handle some of this grant money coming toward us. But we believe that the police HVAC, we can probably pay for through ARPA funds. So that's been, that's our suggestion for that. And that's what I mean by grant. I wasn't even sure at the time I did this, uh, what it would be called at that point. Um, the, I'm just scrolling down your list. I would recommend the, you know, the continuing with the bathroom renovations and the flooring typically for the schools. I think, you know, those are the next items on the list that we've been doing them for the last five years or so. So if, if we can afford it. Um, isn't some of this the sort of thing that the revolving fund was created to allow us to do? Probably not. Which fund? Capital. The Finance uh, Committee's revolving fund. The capital oh. fund. Oh, you mean the, the, I think he means the capital stabilization fund. Oh, okay. So to your question, James, what is the capital stabilization fund supposed to fund? Is it supposed to fund um, capital assets? Yeah. Well, I'm going to, you mind if I throw my two cents worth in? And, and that may be all it's worth at this point. When we started talking about it. Uh, one of the things that we had discussed was building up a capital stabilization fund to some level such that we could then take out on an annual basis whatever was going to be needed to cover basic capital items. Wastewater treatment plant would be excluded, but other ones like vehicles, um, those kinds of things. Um, 
And it would give us a little bit of ability to maybe take out 300,000 one year and only take out 100,000 the next year. And we wouldn't then have to fight about the fact that we're taking $300,000 out, for example, this year. Uh, but then we could put in on an annual basis, a set amount, whether it's 200,000 or 250,000, and just keep putting that in there until it, until it got to some level, whether it's 1.2 million or 1.5 million, whatever it is, and then we would just stop until it came down below that. Or if it dropped down below that million dollar level to say something like 700,000, then we would simply have to stop funding until it got built back up. Does that make any sense to anybody but me? It may not. That makes sense to me, Skip. I like yeah. the idea of using that fund both to put money in every year and to take money out to cover our capital expenses because it just gives us, to me, it makes it feel like we have a little more control and we're gonna have more stable contributions over time. Um, but then I can't remember where where this, the capital stabilization fund is at. And, um, and so then I think we have to have a conversation if we wanna go that way about what, how, you know, how many of the things on this list should be covered by that? Where will that leave that fund in the future? Um, we're also contributing to the fund. So where is it gonna end up for next year? Um, but I, I like the idea of using it that way. Yeah, hang on, John Paresky keeps wanting to say something. So let's let him go and then. Uh... Um, I think we need to remember that it's gonna take a two thirds vote of the taxpayers to use capital stabilization money. We can't, it can't just be a decision of finance committee or capital planning committee or select board. So Let's there's some risk you're saying in deciding that we're gonna use those funds to cover something. Mm -hmm. Right. So but my understanding of the capital stabilization, I wanna say it in my own words and make sure I have this with you. I'm with you on this, is that if we decide, we know on average how much we're going to spend on capital over the next 10 years, and we pick a number, $250,000, every year we're going to spend $250,000 on capital. If we have less than that in actual capital projects, the excess would go into the stabilization fund. If we have more than that, the excess comes out of the stabilization fund, and it just, it equalizes our contribution. So we spend the exact same amount every year, but some years we get more and some years we get less. Yeah, I, John, John had mentioned that we need a two thirds vote to take money out of the stabilization, and which is absolutely correct. Uh, but quite honestly, I don't ever remember going to the town meeting and requesting money out of stabilization uh, where, where we haven't gotten that two thirds vote. And, and I guess that's generally, we don't go to town meeting unless we're absolutely sure that these are items that we need. Right. Um, I, con I concur with that, Jeff Upton. I concur with that. I, I obviously have sat on the capital improvement committee for, I don't know, about six years now, maybe seven, but, and, uh, I think we're heading in the right direction with this and uh, everything that everybody says or has said it that's exactly I think what we were trying to establish with this uh, capital stabilization fund and we don't want to get into a situation where we have been in the past years where we've had capital projects and we simply did not have or we did not have the money. So they got kicked down the road and something that could have been taken care of at a reasonable amount of dollars. Now, five years later, it's a whole lot more money. And now we're in a bind and we're scrambling. So uh, I like the idea of this whole process that we're talking about right now. I agree. Hey, Jeff, can I ask you a 
ask you um, your people for the capital plan. Is this an unusually heavy year for capital requests? I can answer for that. This is this this is heavier than what we've had in the past. We had more requests this year than what we had in the dollar amounts just happened to be larger this year. Okay. Tyler? I think also, oh, sorry. So I also, yes, it, it is. It's a very heavy year. And I think what we were, I think what happened is that we all kind of said, hey, let's get everything on the plan we can think of that we really need. And, um, and so kind of just in the last year or so, everything kind of got piled in and we kind of expect a lot of this to move forward in years. Um, but I, I do think it was more of a catch all year. Like we just said, oh, okay, these are all the things that need to happen. And we all kind of piled them in there expecting that a lot of them wouldn't happen this year. But um, so it is kind of heavy. I, my question is do, um, and I don't know the, if this is uh, the right um, thing to do with the fund or if it's something you can't do with the fund, but would, would we ever use the capital stabilization fund to pay for principal and interest on capital projects that we want to go ahead and say we wanted to, for some reason, we had to purchase, uh, for some reason, we just had to purchase a bunch of stuff that was more than we really had and that we wanted to pull from our fund. Can we go get a, um, a loan for a capital project and then know that over the next five years, we're going to spend 50,000, say 40,000 on principal, 10,000 on interest, something like that over the next five years and that's a plan that we're going to do to take care of a serious need or is it not smart to do that i was i'm just not sure if that's accurate or something we'd want to do i i just have one quick addition to the the previous question about the capital mm. requests i and I, I think another aspect of it this year is that in the past, there have been a lot of capital expenses that haven't made it to the committee um, and that we have ended up buying. So it's hard to compare a little bit apples to oranges because um, mm -hmm. this is one of the first most complete years. Some of these things, maybe the departments were thinking if we can get them done great. If we can't, they could wait. But other things I think maybe in the past would have just you know, ha happened or slipped through or would have, uh, you know, ha gone to the town separately um, or something like that. As to your question, Trevor, I, I think that's a really interesting idea. I don't have a full sense of what it would mean really to, to, um, to use it that way. It seems to me like it isn't entirely being used for capital. It's being used for debt at that point. Um, but it's an interesting conversation to have. Um, I think it might make more sense to use it. And I think the only the capital debt, you know, that was just a thought. Right. Is it a way to stretch it a little bit further than? Yeah. I if, know, just, I if may I, thought of that. may I, if you, if you take a look at the bylaw and your bylaw pretty much spells out what it can be spent on. So uh, I, I think if you were within line of that bylaw, you know, because they have a list of, uh, of five, five items here and, you know, acquisition of land for public purpose, uh, any construction on new fa uh, facility or addition to or extension of or of an existing facility, any infrequent uh, re, uh, rehabilitation or major repair of a building is grounds or related equipment provided that the cost is 25000 or more and the improvement will have a useful life of 10 years or more. Any purchase of any fixed asset provided that the cost is 10000 or more in any planning, feasibility, engineering, or design study related to any of the above capital projects. And then it's all purchases of uh, capital equipment or fixed assets must be presented for study, you know, by the capital improvement committee, regardless of the source of funding. So does that fit in there of, you know, what you were talking about, Trevor? 
uh, I'm not sure, really, right? I, I don't know if it, it, it is, would be purchasing capital projects, but I don't know if, if the bylaw does allow for financing of those projects based, you know, on our capital stabilization. Right. It doesn't really make any sense to me to do that because um, the capital, like the capital stabilization fund doesn't get bigger unless we put more, well, I guess it gets a little interest or something, but it doesn't get bigger unless we put money into it. So if you're going to take out a loan, then it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me to take out a loan in the anticipation of the capitalization capital stabilization fund being bigger in the future and having money available. If you're going to do that, just put the money that you were going to put in this capital stabilization fund and pay off the loan. Um, so it, or am I not seeing this properly? Right. Well, let's see, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand your point because I'm, I'm green to this, so I just don't know. Um, I was so there's say 750,000 or something in the capital stabilization fund right now, right? And sure. we have yep. a yep. sewer project for piping that's going to cost 2 million. Yep. So yep. if we take out the loan for the 2 million, then next year we're going to pay off some number, $100,000. I could take that out of capital stabilization, but we might as well just I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being incoherent. Um, no, I get it. If you're planning to do that, you might as well just spend the money that's in the capital stabilization fund right now instead of mm -hmm. paying interest on it. Or True. Uh, the money, instead of putting more money into capital stabilization, you put it against the loan. Go ahead, Casey. Right. Rescue so me. one thing, there's a different way to do that that relates to debt, Trevor. And that is creating basically as part of the capital planning process, creating a rolling borrowing. Mm -hmm. And the debt to pay that rolling borrowing comes out of operations and any money that you sock away for capital in a stabilization fund of any kind can be used sort of as the down payment on what those purchases could be. But you have a consistent debt amount every year that you use a band to borrow with mm -hmm. and you identify in each year as part of your five year plan what your next purchases are going to be and funnel some of that capital money towards some part of that payment. Um, it would allow you to, to build up some of your capital money, but also allow you to have a consistent ban amount every year, which means your capital projects aren't hitting so much. Anything that you can use for operations toward capital would be great, but it does create some stabilization in and I use that term not to mean a, an account, but stabilization of expenditures. That's what, that's what I was kind of trying to think of is like leveling out some of the highs and lows of, yes. of our purchases when they're so large that, you know, we just, we keep putting them off because we don't have enough money. But I do still think the value of putting money away every year into that account is important. And then whether we pull some of it out to pay debt and then, or get, and, you know, say we can knock off a, a, a few things plus a debt payment would allow us to do more and um, maybe, maybe level out those highs and lows. But I don't know, I need more thought about it. I just wanted to pose a question, so. It's actually a conversation that Brenda and Barbara and I had last week is different strategies to continue to meet the town's capital needs because those needs are not just equipment. Those needs are preservation of capital assets and putting together a plan that allows us to borrow over a period of time to take care of those capital assets could be very useful to making sure not only that work gets done, but also there's a, a process to consistently have that money moving so that the fluctuations in costs aren't are stretched a bit. Casey, may I jump in here for a second? Sure. And I, I thank you for I thank you for those comments because uh, one with your capital improvement plan here, two things happens that that I think that are important. One, it drives it drives uh, your planning process, especially on your larger projects for your town. And two, it also helps 
the town uh, live within its means. Correct. So in other words, they're, 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 they're planning on spending what they can afford. And those two items coming from this, I think that's what really could drive your capital uh, projects plan. Correct. That's, that's you identify, my opinion. Right. You identify those things for that. Right now, the bylaw requires a five-year period. But you identify those things. And then some things you might want to use your capital stabilization for. Other things you might want to roll into a band to leverage your money. That is correct. So this is something that I'd like to have in a more refined form. I don't know that we can do it this year, but I'd like to have a proposal in a more refined form for yeah. everybody to look at capital, the select board and finance committee, because I think we need to sort of settle that kind of a financial policy out mm. before yeah. we try to implement it. But moving forward, considering some of the projects that we're facing, I think we need to start putting something like that in place because it will level that playing field somewhat and level that spending out, but really give people an expectation of how they can see those projects come to fruition through a, a relatively strategic process. I, was thinking maybe uh, I agree 100%. The, like the financial <laughs> advisor could maybe come and give a show and tell or a talk about what we could do, you know, our town advisor. Could I interject here for a second? As I listen to this discussion, what I'm hearing is we have operating expenses that you want to borrow money to cover. To me, that's a problem. We just clarified how that happens, Skip. Okay. I'm saying we're not borrowing for debt. I'm saying it is a problem if you're borrowing money for operating expenses. Uh, no. And that is exactly what you've talked about. No, actually, I just clarified that. We would be borrowing. May I finish? We would be borrowing to pay for capital projects instead of socking all of our free cash against capital projects. We would be leveraging the money we can borrow to pay for capital projects as defined not only in the bylaw, but through DLS's um, identification of what a capital asset or a capital project can be. You've got two definitions there, but the, the bylaw is pretty clear. Um, the debt would be an operational debt and that wouldn't be borrowed necessarily unless you needed to leverage more of that money but most of the time that would come through your operational budget that debt payment would come through the operational budget and that would stay static that's the whole purpose of identifying amount of money that you're going to borrow on a yearly basis you know what that debt payment is going to be and so say it's just for argument's sake say it's five hundred thousand dollars so we borrow $500,000. We have a decent idea of what that debt payment's gonna be and we plug that into the budget every year. And that ban happens every year. Bond anticipation note, I believe is how Barbara would want to approach it because those are short-term borrowings and generally have pretty favorable interest rates, particularly right now. Um, and then every year you plan for that amount and identify the projects that need to fit within that amount. And so that operational cost to pay the interest on that debt stays relatively static, which means you don't see a fluctuation in the number over a significant period of time because you're saying, okay, 500,000 this year, 500,000 next year. If there's fluctuation in your interest rate, that might have an effect but you identify the projects you're going to do with that money. It, it That's seems, my general understanding of how that works. And, and all, I'm, all I'm saying is, for example, $500,000. Uh, you've got an asphalt sidewalk repair. The question for $500,000. The question is, do we borrow the money and plan on paying that off over a five-year period uh, or just plan on paying it 
off because we do that kind of thing now. The school roof is an excellent example. We did not. We borrowed the money on the school roof. It's it's a ban. It was not, you know, we didn't go out and and float a bond, and we pay that down a little at a time. At some point in time, whenever we feel comfortable, uh, Barbara could pay down a hundred thousand dollars. Correct. So, she budgets that money about. in her operational budget for debt. No, she doesn't doesn't necessarily uh, we don't necessarily put it in as, as a part of the budgeting process. I, I so where's the money coming Skip's from? Paying. Well, it could come from free cash. It it could come come right. from at the end of the, the year, you could take fifty thousand dollars if it's left over from the uh, reserve fund. I ask Brenda where it's coming because that's the way we've been doing it with the school roof since we did the school roof. What was it, three or four years ago? Five years ago? School roof. We're paying a hundred thousand down on the school roof every year, which is included in Barbara's maturing debt. Um, but if we can't afford it this year, we can put that aside. That is debt excluded. Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, very quickly. I hear what Skip's saying. Uh, and, and obviously, I hear what Casey's saying. Uh, that's why I think right at the beginning, it said maybe we need to get all three committees together finance, capital, and select board, and uh, hash this out. And I think um, obviously with with uh, Brenda and Barbara available too, I think we could actually make some headway here on how we wanted to handle this. And I, I think it's worth a good discussion. Go ahead, Brenda. Um, nobody has mentioned the municipal building fund that we still have, which is sitting in a trust fund um, that can be used for capital as well. Right now, that balance is sitting at about 52000 and change. So that could be used um, as a funding source for some of these capital projects, at least this year. I might as well use that up and get rid of it. It's, it's really more of a stabilization fund, but it's sitting there as a trust fund. And so maybe we could use that for the municipal offices repairs. If well, we if, reduce that slight, reduce the request slightly, maybe make it 50,000 instead of 60,000 and set that up so that we could start doing some of those municipal repairs. I'm just picking a project that I know is a capital asset. Well, and, and speaking of that specific project, Casey, um, we've had Deerfield Academy come and do some of those items already. So they've done those. At, That's why I say we can take it down to 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to your point, that money is sitting there and it's left over from the rehab of the building and the sale of the, of the old town, old town hall in the center of town. So it is appropriate to not only get it off the books, but also put it towards something that is a capital asset that maybe could use some work like the building. So is there, does anybody think we're going to do everything on this list this year? Well, I think, I think there's a couple no. of things that have been kind of taken off, like the website conversion. Um, we've actually budgeted for that as a five-year project in, in contracted services. So that really right. goes away. That, that's gone. Yep. Um, and like I said a couple minutes ago, I know we've already done some of the municipal office, office repairs that Deerfield Academy took on for us, and uh, they did a great job, by the way. So um, I'm sure that could be reduced. Um, so also the file server, the town office file server, we can reduce that to $12,000. Right. I got a quote. Mm 
get file server of 12,000. And, yes. and if, we, if we do put the, um, the multi-purpose loader into Kevin's budget, well, that'll affect our, our omnibus budget. Um, we'll have, I, I don't remember what those figures were um, for the annual lease. It was, I didn't look that like up, but I thought it was 20,000 a year. I don't remember right. 20,000 a year with about 1,000 of interest per year for that 105,000. So is that like a rent to own kind of thing or is it? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, John yes. Press. You had a question? Go ahead. Me, John? John okay, Press. I I'm sorry, I missed a couple of meetings. Um, and I'm looking at spreadsheets of capital projects plan. And the um, two, one got emailed to me today, and it doesn't look anything like what I see on my screen. It's, That's because she, she did a sort. <laughs> so what I did was take that and I sorted it just by the priority that the Capital Improvement Committee um, voted. And the only ones on this list right here are the ones that got a vote from the Capital Improvement Committee. So there's a whole bunch of other lines on it that are all down here of other stuff. Oh, okay. And sorry. But I don't have things like funding source. I That's added, missing. Right. I added that column also. So for discussion purposes, it gives everyone a visual of what can be done where we can find money for it so it's not a spreadsheet that's out there that i don't have right no okay thank you together i can send it to everybody when we're done talking that'd be great to do that right i, I think we I, I think we all should be looking at the same thing my opinion okay it's, in, it's actually good to go through the discussion and see what those updates are because some of this information was given out during the capital hearing and making the changes visually so you can see them in real time can be very helpful, particularly since Julie's adding details. All right, so we want... Do we want to put what what was it twenty one thousand in here? They may remember this number. In where, Julie? Um, for the Wacker Newson multi-purpose loader, um, Kevin was talking about some sort of rent to own thing where it was. I'm remembering twenty six, but I'm probably wrong. Let me see if I can find it, Julie. Yeah, I was just going to say I could look too. Give me about least, five minutes. Okay. For the for the multi-purpose machine for the highway department. Uh huh. It was, it was twenty twenty thousand a year plus a thousand dollars a year interest, okay, roughly. Great. Thank you. And it'd be five years. So it is going to cost you money to do yeah. that. So the lease purchase would be a five year annual payment at 2.99% with a first payment of 19923 is what his submission says, Jeff. Yeah. I'm looking at the what he submitted. That's Kevin's, right? That was Kevin's, is, yes. Is what, right. That's what he received from the company. And that's what he had sent out to everybody. So it could if we did that, I would take it off the capital plan and put that arguably twenty twenty one thousand dollars into his operational budget because that lease payment would be an operational payment. All right. 
but does that now turn around and affect the overall uh, operating budget? Yes, you would have to, you'll end up with less money to play with in the beginning of this conversation. Right, okay. And so to the, to the discussion before, I was thinking about what everybody was talking about in terms of utilizing the capital stabilization. Um, maybe it makes sense to pick, a, pick one or two things that we could consider using capital stabilization on that were really, I could say this in a different way, but the only thing that's coming out of my brain is sort of a brick and mortar thing. Something that is re a real identifiable asset that people can see and touch because to the point, um, to John's comment before and skips, it does require a two thirds vote to take something out of a stabilization fund. But for purposes of discussing it at town meeting, I agree with, with Skip that it's often, it's often a good argument to give something that they can touch and feel and see there, there could be changes that they will be able to identify for a capital expenditure for something that is really an identifiable asset. So, because I think in my experience in Deerfield, it's, it's not the heaviest lift if you can show people that the return on investment from that money is, is gonna be seen at a, in a particular period of time. And so it's not nebulous, but what do you pick, what do you pick on that list to do that with? Well, Casey, to, to address that, the Capital Improvement Committee did rank these as far I as, that, yeah. you know, right, listening to everybody, you know, through the interviews and that, and they were ranked according to uh, how the committee felt there was a need there. So obviously, since we've done that, some things have changed, such as all so now, you know, we might be able to, uh, you know, do the web design, uh, web design differently. Uh, we might be able to pick up a grant for the HVAC for the police and so right. on and so forth. So, so I think what needs to be done here first is to go through on the capital plan. And unfortunately, I, I don't think the capital committee he has the right to do that at this moment because we already had the public hearing so it comes back to i think it comes back to the select board as far as reviewing the plan and determining what what items here that we had on here qualify for grant money and i know right now we don't know we don't have all the answers but i think we have to come back and revisit this as far as a finance committee because, and then what items, you know, like web design, town web design that, what items can come off or what items can be reduced or what items are going into the operating budget. And that way we can peel this capital plan back and see what we really do have for projects left. Take a look at the ranking with what's left, what has been eliminated and what's left. And then maybe uh, just through the process of elimination, those projects that can bring forward to the uh, annual town meeting will show up just through the ranking. And, and so I think that was what Julie to... was going for here, was to right. start that conversation, Jeff. You know, what, okay. what are the updates? What do we need to focus on? Am I right, Julie? Yeah. Is this the right group of people to have that discussion? Well, you know what I think is interesting? The, the conversation, because the contributions from John and from Jeff and from Skip sort of, sort of distilled down some of the factors that are going to impact what is chosen. But that conversation can be very productive because finance committee, like select board and capital, has a real... Um, 
has, has some real good input to give to the conversation. So just having some sort of an update in this fashion can then be pushed out. Okay, finance committees looked at this. We've received some updates from staff and some suggestions. And why don't we set up a meeting? Here's a document to look at. Why don't we set up a meeting and really go through each item and figure out how we can pay for it? So if we go down this list, first four have other funding sources. This multi-purpose loader can be knocked down to 20-ish thousand. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to go that. The next one, the police HVAC is possible. It's possible for a grant, but I would keep it at the same amount. Uh, so leave the 100,000 in? Yeah, because I will say one thing, even though Treasury hasn't given us an interpretation, um, when somebody asked the word, the vet question, they were amenable to that because they realized there have been some significant um, discoveries of how to better deal with air volume and processing due to COVID. So they tend to be amenable to this just in, in very basic conversations. The other, the other way of looking at this, the other way of looking at this, and as Julie mentioned, the first four or five here, uh, or the first four anyways, we have other resources that will take care of those. So you start at number five, you figure out how much you can spend uh, on capital projects and you start with number five and you go down through and when you run out of that set dollar amount those are the projects that get funded and the other projects from whatever number down those don't get funded this year and they get pushed into next year because we simply can't they afford could get, it they could get funded by using capital stabilization money though well that's well, that's what we could, we that's could what do I'm that saying, john but john I, that's what i'm saying you have to determine you have to determine how much money you want to spend on capital projects and that that's up for discussion well that's kind of what i was saying like if we if we did that every year we'd never get to the um the sidewalks right because there's so much money so and that, that's kind of where I was going with the, with the, can we fund that? So, so say we go to town meeting, we say, we want to, we want to fund this sidewalk project. Could we, instead of draining 500,000 out of capital stabilization, could we um, say, okay, over the next seven years, like we did with a school roof, can we pay off principal and interest on the band out of the capital stabilization. So instead of pulling 500 out in one year, we pull out 50,000 a year for seven years or however many years it takes to whatever the numbers are, but just so that we could stretch that so that we weren't sucking out all the money at once and we could still put in, you know, still plan on putting in a couple hundred thousand a year. And, and yes, we're, we're washing the money because some's coming out to pay for for um, you know, for debt and interest on on a big project like that, that that was kind of my question. Could we do something like that? Because we'll never get to you know, we'll just never have enough free cash to to pull a project like that together. And that was my point earlier, Trevor. Yeah, that we discussed. It's it's I you know I I hear what you're saying, and I think it's a discussion that. Uh, next year, you know, the three, at least the three committees and in, in your town administrators, you know, uh, counting and that uh, need need to be involved yep. with. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So basically, a financial team meeting with some information that everybody can digest over a period of time, so that when we get to December first, we have a better idea of how we want to approach the capital planning process. Exactly. And right. so. I think we could take some of that time and do that. And I think it would be useful for all three committees in some form or fashion to participate 
so that we get the input from all three committees because it's i always find when i sit and talk with you all um there's a lot of brainstorming and troubleshooting that happens and it's very useful long term i think yeah we learn a lot together thanks Speaking of the sidewalks, though, is, isn't it possible that we could leverage um, that with some of the ARPA funds? I, I thought- I We're thought not sure yet. Yeah. I'm waiting to see. Was, I thought there was a possibility of a grant for that so that we could use the ARPA funds as a match for whatever grant. I thought there was a grant involved with that um, particular project, no? Well, there are several grants actually. So you have your dedicated funds that the towns are going to receive straight to us, okay? Then you have a series of grants that are built into ARPA, which are competitive and the town would have to apply for. What I did last week was I looked through that information to see where I thought we could start to think about it. And I didn't see a lot that really um, it lends itself to sidewalk infrastructure. There's other infrastructure. Um, and so that there's other things that I've seen to date. It's really what we need to know is if there's any wiggle room in some of this that could allow us to leverage Brenda, because if we could allow, if we, if treasury's interpretation of the law allows us to leverage a certain amount of money and then we can fund some more or use that leveraged money as a grant match, then we might be able to make some progress. The biggest hitch to all of that is having something shovel ready. Because if you recall, there's complete streets out there, there's the common and there's the Leary lot. And some of these could really, like the Leary lot could be an economic builder in the community. If we tie some of this together and demonstrate how we're going to build the economic value in the center of town, which I think a lot of the businesses would like to see after some conversations I've had in the past two days. Um, I think that's one of those leverage tipping points, but it really depends on how they're going to interpret. Casey, what about the complete streets program? You know, that's enough. So, there, okay. That, you know, a couple of years ago, that was a high up, and now it's right. kind of falling off the falling off radar the screen. <laughs> so, that's a very good You're point. Right. Jeff. That's a very good point. There is a tiered application process with Complete Streets, and it's a conversation, a brief one, that I had with the gentleman who's been working with the Common Ad Hoc Committee about because I was curious about it. We would need some assistance to review our tier two, tier two to three process. We had completed the first two tiers. There's a third tier to go through, but that's a more comprehensive process that I think we're gonna need to fund. And so by leveraging, if we could leverage some of those grant funds to help us get to a shovel ready project, we could be in better shape. Um, it's just a question of, sort of this hurry up and wait that the federal government is imposing by not finishing up their interpretation. And then implementing a process to work with an engineer and develop that, a, a more refined vision. So in other words, as a town, we're at a point where we, we can't initiate or move forward on this until the federal government makes some uh, decisions as far as how they want to have this process work? Not necessarily. It's the, there's two things. You've got, you've got the, the possible availability of money, of the ARPA money as a leverage to get to a higher, get to a better project, get to a shovel ready project but also the understanding of how we fit into the complete streets program itself. And that's something that has, that honestly hasn't, we haven't had the, the ability to follow up in the office because of capacity issues and because of the need to keep some of these other grant programs moving. The town has a lot of grant programs and the administrative cost in time and 
and simply processing is pretty high. Plus, honestly, people can get mad about me saying COVID impacted, but COVID did impact. It really did have, a, it had a, a detrimental effect on our ability to continue planning in certain areas because there just wasn't enough time to deal with the emergency in front of us and be able to refocus our efforts on a newer grant process that we had to get up to speed on. Okay. No, I, I, and I was just wondering if there's, if this is something that we can address as a town, I'm not just saying any one yeah. individual or two individuals, I'm just saying as a town, is this something that we can address and try to move forward on it, especially if there's some grant money available, you know, like maybe I'm wrong, but I was thinking in my mind, complete street program, you know, we're talking sidewalks here or half a million dollars yes. worth of sidewalks. I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't that fit, you know? It, it would, just, but let's me, keep in it, mind you've got the Leary like lot and you've got the common and those two things, if you tie them together, you have a better shot of it being a holistic project because right. you want those things to tie together from the perspective of grander planning. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I, I, it'd be nice if we could tie all three things together and go, you know, pursue whatever process we have to pursue. And as you said, try to get those to the point where they would be shovel ready. So from all this discussion of the sidewalk, are we even ready to have the sidewalks on the list this year? Is this something if the money were available, we would really be able to attack that. I would say I after say what I've after heard in the last two, the last months, two months, I think it makes sense for us sense to come up with a better plan. Vision. John Bichert, go ahead. John Bichert, go ahead. Okay, the uh, thing that I'd like to say is that of that list, we've already gone down one through four. We're kind of stymied on the five. On number five, as far as I'm concerned, I would have no problem telling the highway department that they could purchase that, the lease purchase for five years and put that into the regular budget. I think one other thing that I would like to see addressed or we could address is the municipal office repairs. That's uh, I believe number nine or 10. Number 10. We could do that simply by taking the money from the sale of the old town hall, eliminating that thing and paying off that that portion, that'd be one less thing on this list that could be done. As far as I'm concerned, the extra 90,000 that we may have in a budget or 80,000, leave it in case we need something. So that's kind of where I stand with it. And it's not it's money that's, that's coming, coming out, out of free, free cash, cash or anything. anything. No, it come out of the fund that, uh, Right. Brenda said that we have this money. She'd like to close out that account. If we've got yeah. the money in there, yeah. why not take that account, close it out, and do the senior do the municipal office repairs? We've been needing them for years. Let's just do it. That municipal building fund is fifty-one thousand eight hundred. Fifty-one thousand. If you want a motion on that, let me know and I'll make a motion. So let me ask another question first, or we can do it as part of discussion. Um, so the finance committee. So there's 118,000 plus or minus available from the whole free cash calculation. There's 51, 52,000 available from the uh, uh, municipal building fund. Um, and then there's the possibility of using funding from the capital stabilization fund. Um, 
Does anybody on the finance committee have comments about how much of that we would recommend doing? No. Okay. Um, do we want the select board to look at the list and come to us with a list of what they really want to do this year based on the feedback that they've gotten and the discussion that's been had? I think that's a great idea. I think, um, you know, given that we're looking at a list that probably won't be fully funded, we've got these different funding sources, I think it would be good at this point to have that discussion with them about which things are not happening this year and, and which things can happen. But I know that they're prioritized and that's helpful, but when it comes to the breakdowns, if we can do two projects that are below a priority because they're they cost less than the higher priority one, I think that's a, a judgment call that we shouldn't involve the select board in. Yep, you looked like you had a comment. No, no, I just picked my coffee. I was looking at my watch, <laughs> wondering whether it was time to. I just have, I have one comment, Jeff Upton. I have one comment and that is, that is, I hear what people are saying. I personally am fine with that, but just in all fairness, I want to say that uh, the Capital Improvement Committee, hopefully you all remember that everything that we've discussed tonight, for the majority of it, we did not have that information when when this capital improvement plan was developed. So uh, so there was, there was decisions made within the Capital Improvement Committee based on li the limited information that we were able to obtain by the by the time that our deadline was due so uh once again that's another reason maybe why we need to look at that and i think casey is going to do that that uh, 60 day deadline on uh the bylaw because right now the if we didn't have that deadline the capital improvement committee could be in on this conversation and i think you would possibly see uh, a lot of agreement in, in in this you know like allison brought up just recently how many dollars do we have what are the real needs here and so that ranking may be a little different so i just want to uh say that hopefully you respect all the effort that the capital committee members put into this and I hope you understand where they were coming from, because we obviously, as a committee, had limited information. So, uh, going I personally forward, think the capital improvement the, planning committee did a fantastic job, and it's this, really helpful to have this prioritized list. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. I quite yeah, agree. It, and there's nothing to say you can't go back and review it under changed circumstances, Jeff. Because they have right. changed, right? Oh, there's no question about it. But but because because of our bylaw in the committee presented it already, we can't go back and change it now. The finance committee in the uh, select board can weigh in and adjust this, but technically, the capital improvement committee can't. I don't see why the capital improvement my committee can't be it. part of that conversation, though. Yeah, I think they can comment on it. I think they I would absolutely submit think you can plan. comment. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they would submit a new reprioritized plan, but but the plan, you know, it's a tool that the finance yeah. has been using. And well, you could you you could invite them, but we wouldn't be able to vote on anything. I don't know that that's the case, Jeff. I don't yeah. know that that's the case. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. I have one other question. Um, if we voted, if we were to vote the whole town to 
all $503,000 to do the asphalt sidewalk repairs out of the capital stabilization fund. I'm not necessarily recommending this, I'm just asking this question. And then in the process of getting ready for that, we were able to get a grant or whatever. And it turned out we only needed 100,000 instead of 500,000. Would we only pull 100,000 out or how would that work? You see what I'm asking? Julie, can you rephrase it? I'm think I'm trying sure. to parse what you just said. The, so the project has been approved. Whether it gets presented to town meeting or not, if there's no funding source, doesn't mean the project hasn't been approved. It's been approved and prioritized. If we don't have the money to present it at town meeting for funding, but if suddenly grant money becomes available, the project's still been approved. I think the question was if the town votes to move, move money from capital stabilization for a specific project and that specific project no longer needs that full amount of money to complete, does that money that was removed from capital stabilization go back to capital stabilization? Does it go to free? Where does, where does the difference go? That's exactly my question. You, I think you have to make a choice to put it back into capital stabilization. What, go, what goes in and comes out still requires town meeting appropriative vote, appropriation vote. So then we would have to, as a, as a town, vote to restore it um, if we you did, might if we didn't use it all. But look at it this way. There's another amount. If you look at FY23 anticipated, there's more street um, sidewalks. So if we were able to leverage grant funding for that, it could allow us to do more or different sidewalk sidewalks within that project. Jim, you had a comment? I think town meeting would question. We would need to be very clear with town meeting what the intent was, though. Go ahead, Jim. I do have a comment. Um, wouldn't some of that simply depend on the wording of the specific uh, measure that was voted by the town. For example, you could you could put a proposal before the town to remove funds from the capital stabilization fund to fund sidewalks with any surplus being returned to capital sta stabilization. Possibly. Some of that. Possibly. That's what we pay council to help us figure out, Jim. So thanks. <laughs> That's a good idea. Quite gotten that far. Okay. Here's what I'm feeling is that we're not ready to vote on anything on this right now that we want the a joint meeting with the select board to come up with a solid plan for capital for next year. Is that a fair summary of what we've been discussing? Yes. I'm not seeing any not here. I'm going to stop sharing so we can all stare at each other's faces. <laughs> um, that would make sense to me, Julie. I'm also sort of feeling a time crunch. So maybe we should do this next week, or maybe we should have another meeting next week, or can we wait two weeks to do this? What I'd like to do, Julie, is send an email out to the board so that we could coordinate that and to Capitol. I think Capitol has a meeting on Thursday, Jeff. Yeah, we have a meeting this Thursday. Okay. So I think I would want to coordinate with all three committees because everybody has some input on this and certainly will have opinions when it gets to town meeting. So if we could coordinate that for Tuesday and have a robust conversation, it would be very helpful in terms of the warrant process and all that gobbledygook that has to happen. Skip, go ahead. Uh, just a couple of things. We've got five or six weeks before the town meeting. So there's no reason that we could not have another meeting, one. Number two, if some of these capital items were just placed on hold, I think it's pretty safe to say that in the fall, we are very likely to have another town meeting. So they can come up at that point in time when the when the funding sources uh, are, are clearer. Uh, I 
think there's a couple that could be done and we've already identified sources of other to pay for some of them in terms of the sidewalks yes. i i agree the sidewalks could be one of those um things that we discuss at a at a special and if you recall we had a conversation where trevor gave us some information about um the discoveries we're making in the pipe pipes that you the pipes the distribution system for the sewer so that's another thing that from a preparatory perspective what you all talked about last week was really helpful for me when i took it to dpc with trevor and we talked about it today um giving us ourselves a little time to really plan um especially if we can leverage i mean there's more than one possibility for some of this infrastructure that i i think could be useful it's just we we don't know what's coming out of the federal government. We don't know how things are going to play out from the state's perspective. We do know that the state is starting to consolidate consideration for grants in a way that they didn't used to. So that could be really helpful. So I, I agree with Skip that some of this should, we could possibly put off and, and get some more information. But some of it, like the school stuff, I think those the school stuff is is not a huge amount of money, but goes a long way to keep their up, I shouldn't say upgrades, it's not upgrades, but keep up with the maintenance needs in their facilities. And that's really what maintaining your facilities is all about. So maybe we make tougher decisions in a week or two about what some of these other projects could be on hold for. But I did wanna say, the board is very interested in having a pre-town meeting on the 26th of May. And so one of the things that we could show them is, okay, this was the original list that we sent through and had the hearing about. These are the reasons that we're making decisions to not pursue this right now. Because then to your point, Skip, it identifies the fact that we need more information and we wanna see if we can find a way to leverage our funds. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's really expensive and we don't have the money right now. But these are the things that we can afford to do and want to do because we want to keep some move it, movement forward on some of this. I take exception to some of the stuff saying we don't have the money now. When we, the plan is to put money into capitalist, capital stabilization, we have money in capital stabilization. You do. Well, let, let, let's use it and get some of these things we need instead of just keep accumulating money. I'm sorry, I meant free for. cash, John. Uh, I mean capital stabilization. That's what I don't for. disagree with you. You could do that. I would limit it to assets, capital asset projects. Um, just because that's very cautionary. From my perspective, that's very conservative, but that was the purpose as I understood your capital stabilization. And you could limit the dollar amount. Okay, we're going to take X amount of money. Right now, you've got a little, little over eight hundred and thirty thousand, Brenda. Capital stabilization. Eight hundred sixty thousand right now in capital stabilization. Okay. Yeah. But that balance of taking money out and then putting money in, you make it. And so this is a policy decision to some extent. Do you want to take a certain amount out, but then commit next year to putting money back into it? Um, Conway does it that way, actually. A lot of towns do it that way. They set a goal of taking, okay, I'll throw another number out there. They set a goal of taking $100,000 out for four or five, di five different things, but they put money in over a period of time to balance the, the subtraction. Okay. <laughs> I I don't I don't feel like we're ready to vote on anything, right? I, I'm not feeling a big consensus among the whole group here. I think you're right. Okay. Um, so how about AC 
coordinates with all the boards and we come up with a date, possibly a week from tonight at 5 p.m. to revisit this discussion. Does that work for you? I will not be available next week, but um, oh, I, don't, no. I don't think that should be the defining factor for next week's meeting. I can share my opinions. And, but that means somebody else has to take minutes. It does mean alarming. somebody else has to take very minutes. Alarming. <laughs> Julie wants you to come. Yeah. Well, I have a lot I have um, late board meetings, so we're yeah. I'm teasing you. Wait, <laughs> you really right. it's a little into There's a I have probably evening button. meetings like three nights too, a week. So. <clears throat> oh gosh. Um. Are we ready to talk about the uh swim program or whatever, or is that not yeah. going to? I, I think Beth forgot about our meeting tonight. So I was gonna send her an email and ask her to come to the next meeting for whenever we schedule that. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that covers our agenda. Are there any items not anticipated that anybody wants to chat about? Go ahead, John Bresky. Are we, can you send out the latest capital projects plan so we're all looking at the same thing? I'm still a little concerned. I don't have what everybody else has. What you saw is what Julie was making changes to just for argument's sake, John. So we would just need to be clear that that's a draft of possible with possible funding, Julie. Okay. It's not the plan that was, it's as not, Jeff said, it's not the plan that was um, used as the hearing, but it's a work, it's a work, working document that we can use to identify funding sources. And I'd like to have you, but it'd be nice. Understand, but it'd be nice to have it in front of us as well. I right. realize it's not that the out after plan, the meeting, right, Julie? I'll send that to, so Brenda sent us a five-year capital report today, right? Yeah. Yeah, 2.06 p.m. today. And that's the official capital plan that we all have. Yeah. Um, I, asked, I, I asked Brenda actually to send it to me in Excel format just so I could play with the numbers. And I sorted it um, in order of the Capital Improvement Committee's recommendations. Um, and I will send that Excel spreadsheet with just those lines that we talked about this evening with the notes that I wrote down as we were discussing this evening. I will send that out to this whole group as soon as we're done. I'll share it with Thank the you. select board. Thank you. That was okay. great, by the way, Julie. That was uh, very helpful, I think, for my purposes um, to be able to see it in the order of, of the uh, recommendations. <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't know that we have any public, but so our, our, our next meeting is to be scheduled. It's going to be a joint meeting with select board and possibly the ICC. And then our next scheduled meeting is May 18th. Is that correct? Yes. At 5 PM. So we might have one on the 11th. 5 p.m. or it may be some other time that Casey with us. So let me send an email out to Jennifer and copy blind carbon copy the board and capital and you guys and see if we have space in our Zoom account, one of the Zoom accounts for a joint meeting. And then we can I'll have a better idea of whether we can schedule that next week, Julie. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So should I have Beth come on the 18th? Yeah. Because okay. that's definite. <laughs> we will have a meeting then. All right. So we will definitely have a meeting on the 18th. We may have a meeting on the 11th or some other date that Casey tells us. Um, no pressure. And um, I think we just had a meeting with the only vote being the um, minutes. but. 
it was that'll happen to... that'll happen towards the end of budget season so <laughs> anybody else have anything we need to talk about tonight i just wanted to let everybody know that the we'll be discussing the class class co classification compensation study i can't talk tomorrow with at least in draft format with the select board and the consultant, Mary Accardi. And she will be hopping on our meeting at seven o'clock. So we had to make it, we had to rearrange her time because she had a conflict come up. So um, you're welcome to, to pop in and watch and we'll have more conversation about it. But it would give me an opportunity to see what some of the information is, is come out of the study. The documentation, at least the draft documentation is in the select board packet, which is will be published on the website. If it isn't already up there, it'll be there tomorrow. Brenda, can, would you email me or the, the committee the most recent budget expense detail? I sure can. Okay, uh, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, uh, give, me a, give me a day or two so we can nail down that open space figure yeah no, no problem they do have dlta money available until the end of the calendar year we need this the open space and rec committee to meet and start the process so that's the update in the email that i got while you guys were talking Anybody else? No. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, raise your hands. All right. That's unanimous. And at 6.42 PM. Thanks, everybody.